Hello and welcome. I am John Bykowski, president of the American Association of Individual Investors. Dr. James Clunan started the American Association of Individual Investors in 1978 with the mission of assisting Main Street investors in becoming effective managers of their own assets through programs of education, information, and research. The investment environment was very different when the AI began over 40 years ago. Investment information did not flow easily. Fixed brokerage commissions had just recently been stricken, freeing brokers to compete on price and spurring the era of active do-it-yourself investing. Back then, research might have included a trip to your local library, which hopefully had a company's tear sheets to review, or perhaps even sending a letter to a company to request an annual report. Investment education for the individual investor was very limited. Dr. Clunan founded the AAII with the clear understanding that individual investors have not only unique investment needs, they also have special opportunities which institutional investors cannot easily pursue. He understood that individuals are fully capable of becoming effective managers of their own assets. There is no special talent required to succeed in investing, only a little bit of dedication and access to quality education that provides a framework for intelligent investment decision making. Over the years, we have assisted over 2 million individuals in their educational journey. In 2013, the AAII established the Clunan Award for Excellence in Investment Education. It was to recognize individuals who have made significant advances and contributions in the area of investor education. It is my honor to announce the recipient of the award for 2021, Paul Merriman. Paul Merriman began his financial career in the 1960s, working as a broker for a major Wall Street firm, but he quickly determined that Wall Street was burdened with too many conflicts of interest. After taking a break from Wall Street in 1983, Paul founded the independent fee-only investment management firm bearing his name. Today, Merriman Wealth Management oversees over 3.5 billion in assets for clients across the country. Upon his retirement from his advisory firm in 2012, he established the nonprofit Merriman Financial Education Foundation and has been focused on educating investors young and old. Looking at Paul's body of work, one quickly comes to appreciate the diverse programs of educational outreach that Paul has established over his long investment career. For example, he was a publisher of a popular mutual fund monthly newsletter and website. Paul helped investors improve their financial fitness through a television program produced through P for PBS. He hosted a radio show that eventually evolved into his Sound Investing podcast. Paul has written over 200 articles on a range of topics such as mutual funds, index investing, asset allocation, and even willing to tackle difficult decisions such as active management versus buy and hold strategies. He has authored several investment books, including We're Talking Millions, 12 Simple Ways to Supercharge Your Retirement Investments, which he just published in late 2020. And of course, AAII members know Paul as a contributing editor to the AAII Journal. It is no surprise that if you do a Google search for Paul Merriman, the word that pops up next to his wonderful face to describe him is an educator. It is with great honor and respect that we recognize Paul Merriman as the 2021 recipient of the Clunan Award for Excellence in Investment Education. John, thank you so much. I got to tell you, this is an, um, such an honor for me and uh, something, an award that I'm going to cherish for the rest of my life. And, and I, you know something, when I found out about this, I actually went to Google. I had not been to Google for years to see who G Google thinks I am. And I too saw the word educator. And I said, hallelujah, because that's what I'm trying to be. And, 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 and I want to talk for a few minutes 
about, for one thing, the difference between an investment advisor and an educator and how different their lives are. And I want to talk about before James Clunan and after James Clunan in terms of what the market and the the, the, the view of who is being served uh, in terms of profits. And, and when I went into the industry in the mid-60s, really, Wall Street was not built for making money for investors. It was absolutely first and foremost for Wall Street. And it, you can see that. They had a mutual fund that they had an 8.5% load. In fact, they even lied there because it was truly a 9.3% load if you look at the money that you paid that they call eight and a half was applied to the money you got left with, it was 9.3%. And expenses were high. Commissions, as you mentioned, John, regulated uh, so that Wall Street, when I was a broker, if I sold 100 shares of IBM, I got 175. Well, I didn't get it. The firm got it and I got part of it. And if I sold a thousand shares of IBM, I got 1,750. I mean, think about today. That today it could be nothing. It could be a few cents. Uh, what a change! And it's and it's been because of a handful of people that this has happened. I believe. I mean, it was certainly James Clunan was part of it, and John Bogle was part of it, and Charles Schwab was part of it, and some changes in the laws were part of it. But the bottom line is, it just wasn't fair. And I, I even went to the New York Institute of Finance in order to be prepared to be a stockbroker in 1966. And what did I learn? I remember so vividly them telling us that when we go back, we've got to remember it's not about the numbers. It's about the sizzle rather than the steak. You don't want to give people you don't, you don't want to bore people with all the details. Well, of course, it turns out that it's all those details that AAII has been focused on for all these years. And, and, and so uh, we just have to remember that today investing has never been easier. It has never been simpler. It has never had the potential of being any more profitable. Back then, I was taught at the Institute of Finance <laughs> that 10 to 20 stocks, that's all you need. That's all you need. You have proper diversification if you own 10 to 20 stocks. Today, it's more like 10,000 to 15,000 stocks in a properly diversified portfolio built with, with a group of uh, index funds. And there were no fiduciaries back then. Now, everybody wants to be a fiduciary. So the sea change came. And boy, was it wonderful. Because, and it's interesting, the people it came from. I don't know uh, Dr. Clunan's background prior to having started. I and mean, I've read about him in Wikipedia and, and, and whatnot. But I don't know of the ups and downs, but I can tell you this. John Bogle went through ups and downs before he got it right. And also, did Charles Schwab go through ups and downs before he got it right? But they were both game changers and, uh, and, and, and put pressure on everybody else in terms of fees, in terms of commissions and expenses and funds, all in the best interest of the investor. But we have to realize that the educator has a whole different problem from the investment advisor. See, the investment advisor, and I'm working on a book right now, A Thousand Things You Should Know About Investing. I can almost guarantee you that every investment advisor worth their salt would come up with the same list of a thousand if they were asked to put together that list. And in a sense, that's what the do-it-yourselfer somehow has to be able to wade through. Now, you don't have to know a thousand things, but 
The investment advisor, you come into their office, you sit down, you explain who you are, they ask you a few questions, they've got all these ideas in the back of their head that they know and all this information, they're going to zero in and only talk with you about a very small part of what they know in order to fill the needs they believe that you have. And so that's their job. And by the way, it's far easier than being an educator, because as an educator, if you're trying to help people who were just born and people who are teenagers and people who are in their 20s and their 90s, et cetera, all that, you have got to somehow feed them information that they can get through in some way that's halfway efficient to answer the needs, the questions they have. That's the reason we have not ventured outside of the things that we know. That's the reason we only focus on a handful of important decisions and help people make those decisions. And they're all investment decisions. So it, 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 it is difficult to, to address all of the challenges. But the do-it-yourselfer, they need to know this stuff. They need to know. There's a, there, there is this uh, a circle of information, of knowledge that uh, you should have about investing or you could have about investing. And inside there, there's a piece of pie, if we look at it like a pie graph, that, that, that represents what you know you know. And what the educator is trying to do as best they can is expand that piece of pie. Now, the financial industry is not sure they want to expand that piece of pie because if you know too much, you start to be a do-it-yourselfer. But then there's the piece of pie that represents what you know you don't know. Now, that's an important piece of pie because a lot of people run around talking about like they know what the future is going to bring. Nobody knows. John Bogle said they don't in the industry. They don't know nothing. And so we don't know nothing. And, of course, the defense against not knowing nothing is to diversify. And that, of course, is what I think every educator worth their salt is trying to get people to do, is not only protect them from that piece of pie, but there is another piece of pie that represents what you don't know you don't know. And the only protection against that is, is diversification. And really, we advocate massive diversification. Then there's a piece that represents what you know you know, but you're wrong. And that's our job too. Those are called the myths of, re of investing. And a lot of people believe things that just, just aren't true. I think of all these young people who won't put money in the stock market because it's risky. Well, really on the long term, it's not very risky at all. It turns out the bonds they're putting their money into, the guaranteed instruments, that's the real risk. And finally, and here's the toughest piece of this pie for an educator. The educator has to figure out what do you do with the person that knows all about this, all the right things to do, but they don't do anything about it. And as educators, it is difficult to motivate people to move Change is difficult. Trust is, is difficult when it's something that you don't quite understand. And the devil I know is better than the devil I don't know. By the way, I did forget something I wanted to mention. I forgot to mention Burton Malkiel, the man who wrote a random walk down Main, uh, Wall Street, he also came out of the 70s. And I have to share with you in 1973 what he wrote. What we need is a no-load minimum management fee mutual fund that simply buys the hundreds of stocks making up the broad stock market averages and does no trading of securities to, attap, attap, to attempt to catch the winners. And he goes on and on and what he's talking about. And he was even advocating that the New York Stock Exchange should put it together and not charge anything so that all investors would have access to it. So 
it's a great job being an educator. And I love working with AAII. I do not know another organization like AAII for $23, I think, or $29 a year. You, you, you get the publication, the journal, lots of good information in there. In fact, I, recently Craig Israelson, who's at the conference, wrote an article. I just thought it was wonderful and shared it with everybody. And so that, and in the old days, we used to go talk to people at the local chapters. But I think now that the Zoom presentations have become such a big deal, we may find that is going to be a, a, a more regular way. And let me tell you, if you just go to the AAII site and you're, and, and you're a member and, and you want to go watch the, the, the Zoom presentations that are being made around the world, in, in, a, in a week or so, Mark Holbert's going to be making a presentation. I would love to be there. And now I can because it's going to be a Zoom presentation. So I am concerned about one thing. I'm very concerned about our youth. And I want to see if I can motivate you to do something about that. Uh, it's, it's not, you don't have to write any checks. Um, what you have to do is to learn about a fellow who I think is the brightest person in our industry in terms of education. If I had to award an education expert to take care of our youth, I would, I would nominate Tim Ranzetta. He has a website that is the curriculum is built for, for middle school to high school. It is all free. It is built so that before kids even go to college, we're right now on college campuses. Guess who's coming to college campuses right now? Robin Hood. Robin Hood is coming. They are even going to give kids who, who come to their come to the campus program $15 to get you started so that you develop the right habit. I mean, that's what the it says so. It says that in their promotional material about coming to a campus by you. We need our kids educated before they get to college, evidently. And let me suggest you go to ngpf.org and look at the work of Tim Ranzetta and tell me if you would want your kids or wish you had that education uh, when you came out of high school. His work, and by the way, he self-funds everything. He wouldn't take a check from me. And he teaches the teachers free as well as providing all of the curriculum. We want bright AAII members, and these will be bright AAII members when they grow up. I do have to say I keep learning. I keep learning every day. I learn from Chris Pedersen, who developed the two funds for life, and Daryl Balls, who does all of our analytical work. I spent an hour and a half with John Bogle in, in 19, 2017, and he changed my life. I learned so much in that 90-minute period. And so it isn't just my work. I may be getting the award, and I appreciate that, but the people who are working to serve our firm to serve you, uh, the people, Asia and Margie and Renee, who take care of all the website and all of that. And then we have Rich Buck helping me turn out the articles. I'm not the smart guy I look. I'm the guy dedicated to be willing to stand up here and hopefully share this information with you. But these people who are helping, whether they're in our organization or outside, because I do learn from a lot of other truth tellers. And oh, by the way, many of those truth tellers are right here at this conference. So it is an honor to receive this award. And I will do all I can to continue. You've motivated me. I was thinking about retirement. I think I better keep going another 10 years. I think my wife is in the next room and I'm about to get in trouble for having said that, but I'm having fun. I hope you're learning something from our work, and I hope you know that we are open to knowing new ways, learning new ways to help you get a better education. And thank you, AAII, for all you do for investors. 
John, much appreciated. Keep up the good work. Call me when you need help, okay? Thank you very much, Paul. I, I think I'll take you up on that offer. And uh, we, I certainly appreciate, first of all, how you have expanded the overall circle of investment education that all investors have, because really that's the one best way to really ensure that we make good decisions. And uh, I think it's the notion that you, what you do so well is you simplify the education process because too often it, it, investment is made to seem more complex than it needs to be. Right. And, and really uh, you can make it as simple or as complex as you want it to be, but it's important to understand all the important historical elements that go into making good investment decisions to have a good plan in place and to be able to execute it. And, you know, you've done a wonderful job as far as providing that core information that investors need to succeed. So with that, Paul, thank you very much for all you do. I look forward to uh, continue 10 years. Perhaps your wife uh, does not, but then, you know, it, it's we, we, we're the beneficiary of that. So thank you so much. And I'm Thank looking you. forward to seeing your keynote presentation, which is coming up very shortly.